You know, it has been a while since we've looked at some ridiculous gaming PC ads, and after just skimming the surface, just in my local area, I can say with certainty that there are still plenty ridiculous ads out there. Now obviously things are sorta of kinda of being compounded right now as a result of the graphics card market being turned upside down, as a result of mining, as a result of the silicon shortage, as a result of a ton of things, and we've talked about that in a dedicated video. So that is definitely skewing some prices here, but I'm still gonna show you some ridiculous ads I've found, even some previously sold listings on sites like eBay that are just, they're really, they're, they're, there's something else. You might wanna buckle up for this one, stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. All right, so let's kick things off with uh, an ad that I find to be rather distasteful. It is a $5,000 listing, well, pardon me, it's a $4,500 listing now. He tried listing for 5,000 at one point. He's only got it up here for $500, but I should note that Facebook has this really weird rule where like if it's, if you're selling something for more than $500, you can't ship it. So what people do is just list things for 500 bucks and then they actually say in the description, oh no, it's not really $500, it's 10 times that, you know? So it, I don't know, it's kind of a stupid rule on Facebook's part, I'm sure for liability reasons and the like, but uh, this guy's got a 10900K in here, RTX 3070, Founders Edition, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte M.2, you know, the usual spiel, right? It's a very powerful system, very well balanced, but for four and a half freaking grand? The 3070, let's be honest, it's gonna go for about $1,000, if not more. Uh, it just depends on who you happen to sell to and at what point in time you happen to sell it. Uh, but those cards are pretty hot, right? So the people are paying well over MSRP for them, but I don't think that a $4,500 ask is, is even like in the ballpark. He'll probably sell it though. That's just how it goes. Now the next one I wanna show you is an eBay listing. And at first glance you're thinking, all right, it's a pretty vanilla RX 570 from Gigabyte, not too bad. And then whoa, whoa, winning bid 66 bucks. Prices are coming down. I mean, this is like super reasonable for an RX 574 gig. Uh, but then you read the condition. It says four parts are not working. DMG, no fan spin or display. Someone paid $66 plus $15 in shipping. It's about 80 US dollars for a broken RX 570. Hold up, I take it back. This is an MSI RX 570, four gig. It also sold for $69.99, $12.80 shipping. You're thinking good deal, right? It sold for parts or not working. And if we scroll down here to the description, it says card powers on, but boots to black screen and VGA light on motherboard is on. Das ist nicht gut. So that's two broken RX 574 gigs that sold for almost 100 US dollars each. They actually sold within like a 10 or 15 minute time span of each other. And the descriptions are rather vague, which means they're probably not gonna be repairable. That's just how it usually is with eBay. Another uh, Facebook listing here. This is called a beginner gaming PC listed for $500, previously listed for $600. Condition, um, it says used good. I'm. I'm not too sure about that, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep reading. It's a Lenovo H420 case and motherboard second and third gen Intel i5-3330K, I think with stock cooler, a EVGA 600 watt power supply. It's got 12, g this is like one mega freaking run on sentence. <laughs> um, okay, I don't see a discrete card in this build. I don't see any, let's see, it says with a Asus Super, 1070 Ti, I could almost run Red Dead Redemption 2 without compromising smooth gameplay. The CPU is unlocked. So a OC gaming GPU is a very nice fit. What, so there's not even a graphics card. You're telling me that it runs games fine with a graphics card that you're not even including in the build. Not that I expected a 1070 Ti to be included in a $500 build like this in, in this current market, but still. This is like one big blue ball, my dude. Like I've, I've seen that ad like five times up to this point while filming and I still cannot understand the purpose of it. I mean, it's called a gaming PC, but it is clearly not. I think that 3330K has an IGP, but it, it certainly doesn't qualify as a gaming CPU that even exists. We just have APUs out there and the, the new Ryzen APUs seem to be pretty good alternatives to discrete cards in 2021. But uh, the 3330K, I have a good feeling is gonna fall quite short of that. Now this Craigslist listing, this is this is something here. High-end gaming PC, i7 9700K. Okay, high-end gaming PC, the card looks pretty beefy in there. Let's see what he's got. Selling my gaming PC, we've got uh, eight core i7 9700K and FX RX 580 eight gig. 
an RX 588 gig. Uh, one of that we said in one of our previous videos, the phrase high-end is one of the most overused phrases in this industry. And, and look, this is just my opinion here, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I'm not afraid of offending anybody. Your specifications should speak for themselves. You shouldn't need to ever, under any circumstance, include a phrase like high-end to, to justify your asking price. People should just be able to look at your specifications, your primary specifications specifically, like your CPU and your graphics card, and decide whether or not your asking price is, you know, in the ballpark. And look, I'm not trying to pick on the guy's build specifically, and the, the build itself, in my eyes, is fine. It might, I don't know, piss somebody off for some stupid reason, but the, the combination of hardware, I mean, it, it's good enough. In this market, I'm not gonna complain about an RX 580 being paired with a, a Core i7 from a couple of generations ago, but I have a problem with this way it's being presented. High end, just nix it. it, it, it it's a gaming PC, sure, but it's not a high-end gaming PC. Not, not even close. Now we've got another listing here, custom built gaming PC, $2,200. I'm not really worried about the location, I don't really care. Another Core i7 9700K, this is interesting. 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage. Feel free to offer, so he's open to offers, that's cool. Newly built i7 9700K gaming PC with Corsair liquid cooling system, freshly installed Windows 10 Pro, perfect for gaming. Everything is ready to go, fully functional and tested. Display via DisplayPort or HDMI, okay, where is the graphics card? Why have you not listed that yet? Now, GTX 1660. Um, for $2,200? That takes this a step too far. Especially when seen in the light of the fact that even if we consider inflated graphics card prices, which I think is fair, of course, because that's what the seller could get if he decided to part out with the card individually. I mean, we're, we're in what, the four or $500 range? That's absurd for a 1660 if you ask me, but people are willing to pay those prices. So that's what we have to deal with here. And that's what we should consider in the listing. So four or $500 for a GTX 1660 and a build that costs $2,200, you'd have to have some pretty premium components to justify the remaining $1,500 or so that he's asking. And honestly, just don't see it here. I mean, we've got an H100i, which is fine. He's got 16 gigs of DDR4, so nothing crazy on the RAM side, a Z390 motherboard, a one terabyte SSD, a 550 watt modular power supply, which is a bit underwhelming in a $2,200 rig, and then a P500A, which is a fine mid tower from Fantex. So yeah, um, not impressed. Now we've been running through a lot of ads. I've got one more for you here. This is a $2,000 listing on OfferUp. So the title reads, self-built gaming PC, CSGO, Fortnite, Cod Wars on Valor and Apex, uh, League of Legends, Assassin's Creed, GTA, and you go, okay, dude, we get the point. All right, it plays most AAA titles. <laughs> That's fine. $2,000, okay? That's a pretty steep ask. We just gotta have good specs, right? It says runs pretty much any game, 150 to 200 FPS. Okay, we got one of these, yeah, we got one of these listings here where um, the <laughs> FPS, a bit arbitrary here, no in-game specs, no resolution mentioned, none of that, but of course the FPS sells, right? So that's all that's gonna be included here. I built this great PC during the stupid lockdown, but I don't really use it anymore. It's practically new and still have all the boxes, but the fractal case box. If you're a good buyer, I'll throw in an extra gift for you. Brand new PS5 Pulse 3D wireless headset. What the heck qualifies as a good buyer? Someone that pays you what you're asking? I think you should be a bit more specific, otherwise I'm just going to assume that I'm gonna get that because I don't know why someone would be a bad, I mean, why would you sell your system to a bad buyer? That doesn't really make sense. This offer includes the gaming PC, the AOC monitor. Okay, you're gonna get the keyboard and mouse, long mouse pad, and PS5 Pulse 3D headset if you're a good buyer. <laughs> Okay, what the heck is a good buyer? He says he's keeping the hard drive because all his info's on there, but still has an SSD. No flashy lights inside the PC. Don't let yourself be fooled by that on other posts. It's not about the LED lights. Oh no, my friend, don't you know? It's all about the LED lights. So he's got an AOC 24 inch frameless gaming IPS monitor, 144 Hertz, 1080p. The whole frameless monitor crap. I mean, none of these monitors are frameless. So that's just marketing jargon. Uh, MSI MPG Z490 motherboard but he's got a, a locked Core i5-10400 in it. So that's that's weird, still six cores, 12 threads. That's not bad, but uh, it is locked. So that don't, yeah, th this combination of hardware really doesn't make sense. You shouldn't you shouldn't take on that burden, right? If, if you're gonna buy a build from somebody else, don't buy a build that just has a bunch of random parts in it that don't make sense. Uh, MSI Ventus GTX 1660 Super, uh, Rosewell Photon Series 650 watt folding module, the power supply, Fractal Design Mesh 5C, and 16 gigs of Ripjaw. V or five series, whatever, DDR4, 3600 megahertz. So it's decently clocked memory, not that it matters much for Intel. And then an Intel 660P NVMe. So, um, I mean, this is probably like the least appalling 
ad that we've seen so far. But for a $2,000 asking price, I mean, that it leaves a sour taste in the mouth. Look, at the end of the day, this price might as well be justified. It, it, I don't have as much a problem with this price as I did the, the previous 9700K listing we looked at. At least you're getting a gaming monitor, some peripherals, but this is the state of things right now. You should expect to find 1660s in $2,000 listings nowadays. That's just how it is. A year ago, absurd. I would have laughed at this listing, but now people know they can get more for their cards because suckers buy them for such insane prices. I looked long and hard for any glimmer of hope that graphics card prices had kind of, I don't know, hit a cap, right? A ceiling and that they were starting to rebound. I found none of that. I found nothing to suggest that prices were coming down in the slightest. In fact, if anything, prices are as high, if not higher than they were the last time we took a good hard look at the market. That was about two months ago. Um, even pre-built PCs are feeling the effects of increased graphics card prices, the shortage, uh, the supply shortage uh, on the manufacturer side, the silicon shortage overall is definitely hurting this particular market. But at the end of the day, we're left with one of two choices, either buy a gaming laptop, which let's be honest, not my first choice. If I could help it, I'd prefer not to game on a laptop, especially if I'm so used to gaming on a desktop. Uh, or you're just gonna have to suck it up and pay whatever sellers want you to pay on eBay. And that has been the case for several months now, and that's why this market continues to thrive. People feel there's no other choice, so they flock to eBay and they buy cards for two or three times MSRP. Some in the comments were saying, two or three times MSRP, where are you looking? Literally look at sold listings on eBay. Any new card is selling for at least double what it MSRPs for. And that is just absurd. And the problem is they are selling like hotcakes. So why on earth should the prices come down anytime soon? The only way to correct this in the immediate is to not buy. If we all chose not to buy en masse, these prices would have to come down. It, it is literally elementary supply and demand. Unfortunately, the demand is so high and the supply is so small that um, prices have remained elevated for quite some time and they won't be coming down anytime soon, folks. Don't get your hopes up. I mean, even if even if Nvidia and AMD suddenly pumped the markets with tons of inventory, it would still take weeks for Newegg and Amazon to catch on to the fact that, uh, that, that supply was now ramped up to the point where they didn't have to mark up their prices, right? Or they didn't have to limit the amount of cards they offered at any given time. They could ditch the raffle systems, they could ditch the lotteries, and they could just sell cards like they used to in the good old days. It is a sad state of things, but if you can take anything away from this video, it's this. If you can hold off, don't buy a card right now. Just don't do it. Some are saying that prices will continue to rise on account of inflation, monetary stimulus, whatever. I, I, I don't think that inflation will hit that hard. Yes, we're printing so much money here in the States that it's gonna just completely throw off the US dollar. I'm sure there will be some serious consequences to, um, to deal with in the future as a result of that. But I don't think graphics cards will be the thing that just suddenly, you know, <laughs> if, if, you're, if a card's worth $400 today and it was worth $200 a year ago, I don't think it's gonna be worth $800 a year from now. I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think you have much to lose from waiting. And, and that's why I recommend that you do. If you have a car that's you're getting by with, right? I mean, it's not ideal, but it is something. I suggest squeaking out a little more time with it until prices drop. And I expect they will maybe a year from now, maybe two years from now, no guarantees, but uh, beats the heck out of paying $500 for a 1660. I'll tell you that much. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Sorry for the bear of bad news, but yeah, things haven't changed. Uh, if anything, they've gotten a bit worse. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how pissed off you are about the current state of things. Don't buy graphics cards right now if you can help it. Stay tuned and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for cringing with me.